I wish I was at the beach right now and every five minutes I will say, amigo, una piña colada, por favor. You don't have to be un experto en español, an expert at Spanish, to understand what a piña colada is, right? Everybody knows this. And just as piña colada, there are many other words or phrases in English, in English that come directly from Spanish. Hola mi gente y bienvenidos a Spring Spanish. Yo soy Paulissima, I am Paulissima and I'm one of the Spanish teachers at Spring Spanish. En este video vamos a comentar, in this video we will comment on 15 words in español that you use in English all the time, including four words that come from my super popular song. You have to stay on the, until the end to find out which song I'm talking about. Who knows? Maybe you know so much more Spanish than you think? Before starting, ya sabes lo que voy a decir, ¿verdad? You already know what I'm about to say. Sí, exacto. Suscríbete a nuestro canal. Subscribe to our channel, Spring Spanish, here on YouTube, of course. Y asegúrate de darle click a la campanita. And make sure to click on that little bell so you never have to miss our free five weekly Spanish lessons. Ahora sí, empecemos. Food and drinks. Margarita. Yes, it is a super famous drink made with tequila, lime juice, and Cointreau, but in español también significa, in Spanish, it also means tasty. Salsa. So, salsa is both the music style and the super famous concoction of Mexican food. So, super famous salsas are salsa verde, green salsa, salsa roja, red salsa, and pico de gallo. Pico de gallo means big of rooster, and that is also a muy famosa, a very famous salsa mexicana, Mexican salsa. Burrito, burrito. So, burrito is a diminutive. Diminutive. It's a very hard word to pronounce. It's the small version of burro, which means donkey. Donkey! So, whenever you're ordering a burrito from Chipotle, you're actually ordering a little donkey. Isn't that cute? Chocolate. Chocolate. Do you know how super, super difficult it is for Mexicans to pronounce the word chocolate in English? We keep saying chocolate or chocolate. It's super difficult. And the word chocolate actually comes from the Nahuel chocolate. Chocolate. Porque el chocolate, because chocolate, como todo lo bueno en esta vida, like all the good things in this life, Es mexicano, señoras y señores. It's Mexican, ladies and gentlemen. Siguiente categoría. Next category. Animales. Armadillo. Armadillo. I know, in English you say something like armadillo. <laughs> so these super cute uh, animals, their name en español significa, it means something like Little armored ones, focus on that Spanish pronunciation. Armadillo, barracuda. These scary looking fish are the reason why my mother doesn't let me get in the water if I'm wearing anything metallic. Political stuff, guerrilla. So when I first heard Americans saying the word guerrilla, <laughs> I thought that they were saying gorila. En español, guerrilla se pronuncia así. It's pronounced like this. Con la R del diablo. With that devilish R. That it's hard to pronounce sometimes. So check out my video about rolling your R's like an expert. Next. Conquistador. Conquistador. 
Well, in English you say like conquistador, a conqueror. And that is the word that we use to refer to the Spaniards that invaded the Americas. So singular, you know, just one is conquistador and plural, many, is conquistadores, conquistadores. And you can also use the word conquistador to refer to a man who is very, very lucky in the ladies department. Embargo, embargo. You know that super questionable geopolitics move? It means the same thing in Spanish than in English, embargo. And you can also use the word embargo to say however. Just add the word sin and then you have sin embargo, sin embargo. It means however. And you're literally saying something like without embargo. Cafetería, cafetería. So in English you'll say cafeteria. It is exactly the same word, pero en español, but in Spanish, we'll have to stress the I, so we pronounce it cafetería, cafetería. That's right, that's right, I know you're trying. Patio, patio. So a lot of English speakers have borrowed this word to say courtyard, but doesn't it sound so much better in Espanol? Patio. So now when you wanna take your drinks al fresco, don't say that you wanna go to a patio. Say patio. Pay attention to the way you're saying letter T. Amulado, a mosquito, malepino. I teach languages, okay? I'm not a singer as you've seen it by now. Amulado, an albino, a mosquito, my libido. There you go, you have four words that are almost identical. Yeah, they're actually identical, except in the pronunciation. Who would have said, right? Mulato. So back in the awful, awful days in Mexican history when castes were a thing, mulato was a word used to describe a person who had both black and white ancestry. It is still used today and even though it's not a word that I would use. There's a lot of people that use it to describe themselves. It's 2020, las palabras pueden reapropiarse. It's 2020, people, words can be reclaimed. Albino. So albinism is a condition where a person or a living um, being lacks completely any pigmentation and it is the same word in English. And Spanish when we talk about a person that has this skin condition, mosquito. This one is like burrito, a diminutive. So we have this annoying flying insect called mosco, mosco, not like mosco, the capital of Russia, mosco. And because they're little, it becomes mosquito, mosquito. So same word in English, but we don't say mosquito, we say mosquito. Libido, <laughs> libido. <clears throat> so it is the desire for sexual pleasure. <laughs> en español se pronuncia libido. Remember the D sound, it's a bit hard, like in dentist. So not libido, but libido, libido. Muy bien, now you're able to enrich your Spanish using 15 palabras, 15 words that you already knew, but now you're pronouncing them in Espanol. If you want to go beyond learning a few words, you have to check out right now the free Spanish training that we have put together for you. So you can see how you can apply this method that we call conversation-based chunking. I use this method secretly, or sometimes not so secretly, uh, through my videos, and you can learn more about how you can use it to ease your way into fluency in Espanol, por supuesto, by checking it out. There you can also find some free sample Spanish lessons that come directly from the Spring Spanish Academy. You're gonna love them, trust them, they're free, 
Go get them. This was Paulissima y fue un placer estar con ustedes. Hasta la próxima. Remember to subscribe to the Spring Spanish YouTube channel, like this video and share it with anyone interested in learning Spanish for good.